Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about the cosecant. And notice how we say the word, it's cosecant, and we write it as CSC of the angle. So what does that mean? Well, again, going to the unit circle, we have the angle theta. We have the unit circle, which has a radius equal to 1. Any point along the unit circle has a coordinate x, y. The x value is defined as the distance from the, from the y-axis to where the point is and the y value is equal to the distance of the x-axis to where the point is. And notice that we had to find the x value as the cosine of theta and the y value as the sine of theta in previous videos. Now also when we take this triangle right here and place it over here, notice that this is a right, right angle right here, and we can see that this is called the hypotenuse. This is the opposite side to the angle, this is the adjacent side to the angle. And all the trigonometric functions, the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and cosecant as well, are defined in terms of the ratios of these sides. And in this case, the cosecant of theta is defined as the ratio of the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. Hypotenuse, of course, is equal to 1 in the unit circle, and the opposite side is equal to y. And since we know that y is defined as the sine of theta, we can see that the cosecant of theta is equal to the inverse of the sine of theta, or 1 over the sine of theta. Knowing that, let's go find out what the cosecant of theta is for, va for various values of the angle theta. For example, the cosecant of 0 degrees is equal to 1 over the sine of 0 degrees, which is 1 over... Okay, and so the sine of 0 degrees is equal to 0, and so 1 divided by 0 is infinity. So the cosecant of 0 is infinity. That makes sense because notice, as the angle gets small, we can see that the opposite side gets small. When the angle goes to 0, the opposite side is 0, so 1 divided by 0 is infinity. And that's how we look at the cosecant of the angle. Now, for other angles, the cosecant of 30 degrees is equal to 1 divided by the sine of 30 degrees, which is equal to 1 divided by 1 half, which is equal to 2. The cosecant of 45 degrees is equal to 1 over the sine of 45 degrees, which is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 over 2, which is equal to 2 divided by the square root of 2. And the cosecant of 60 degrees is equal to 1 over the sine of 60 degrees, which is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 3 over 2, which is equal to 2 divided by the square root of 3. And finally, when we take the cosecant of 90 degrees, that is equal to 1 divided by the sine of 90 degrees, which is equal to 1 divided by 1, which is 1. Oh, there we go, 1. So, you can see that just like the secant, the cosecant varies from values of infinity down to 1, but not less than 1. Again, that because of the definition that the hypotenuse can never be less than 1, so when y takes on its maximum value, the smallest value the cosecant can have is 1. So now you've been introduced to the six trigonometric functions, the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. And in the next many videos, we're going to be using those values. We're going to use those for working out all kinds of relative problems. We're going to use those to um, find all kinds of identities because you find that in mathematics and science, these trigonometric functions come in very, very handy. And we need to know how to manipulate them and how to use them in all kinds of various applications. So having a full understanding of these is very important. At least now you know the definitions, and if you want to know more, keep looking at the videos and I'll show you all kinds of other things we can do with these trigonometric functions.